Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Conference Championship Week. Heading out to the SEC as LSU plays the Georgia Bulldogs. Obviously, LSU coming off just a head-scratching loss to a Texas A&M team that just seemed to be so non-competitive in the SEC. That's kind of what we've seen from the LSU Tigers this year. We've seen them look so, so good beating teams like Alabama. We've also seen them look very, very bad losing teams like Tennessee or Texas A&M. You don't really know what LSU team you're going to get. Other side of it, Georgia, you know what they're going to get. They're the most consistent. They're the most dominant team in college football this year. It's going to be a good one. Like LSU has the, the, the bones, the talent to make this a good game. Whether they bring their best football to the table on Saturday, that's another question. Before we get into it, though, as usual, just want to say thank you guys for the support you guys have shown the channel. Again, we love making these videos. We love talking ball. The SEC fans, you guys are absolutely electric. Nobody watches college football like you guys, and we do appreciate all the support. So if you do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Dill, I'm going to kick this one off to you. What are your early takes on this game here? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're running in the buzzsaw in Georgia. They're still, I think, yeah, they lost a lot of talent, but they're still really, really good. That defense still really, really good. And honestly, you know what's real difference is Stetson Bennett's really playing at an ultra high level where I still think he's vastly underappreciated because he's he's winning games for them, I would say. Yeah, I mean, this is Stetson Bennett. That's what it was like all the talk last year, all the talk during the offseason was is Stetson Bennett even going to start? I follow a lot of Georgia fans on Twitter that wanted Brock Vandergriff to start. More of the story is, yeah, Stetson Bennett, kind of pedestrian numbers, 16 touchdowns and six interceptions. Complete 67% of his balls. He also gives you a very a lot of juice, making extending plays, running for first downs. Like he, Yes, is he an NFL prospect? Probably not. But he's a very, very good college quarterback. And when you surround him with the amount of talent in the run game that Georgia has, like this offense is going to be good. And then you know what Kirby Smart does on the defense side of the ball. They recruit the best players in the country. They have the best scheme in the country. And they just smother you on both sides of the ball. And this is a Georgia team that is as complete and as dominant as any team in the country. And they're playing against an LSU team that can be frisky at times, but nowhere near as complete and as dominant as Georgia. Yeah, and you just look at the start on Georgia's offensive side of the ball. I mean, the team that, honestly, from last year even looks pretty well improved. I don't think that they, they lost George Pickens, but obviously he didn't really play a whole lot with his knee last year. But again, guys like uh, the tight ends, both of them really exceptionally good players. And at the running back spot, I think when you get a guy like Kendall Milton back and McIntosh and, and even Dejuan Edwards, who I don't think people thought was going to be great, but is playing at a high level, I I mean, this team still loaded to the gills, and, and the way they can run the ball is really impressive. Yeah, the Georgia offense is not winning any awards for being like that flashy or explosive. More of the story is they have the best offense line in the country. What do you only lose Jamari Salyer from that offensive line at left tackle? Broderick Jones, as much as I we Dill in the draft process, we love Jamari Saleh. He was our guy. Broderick Jones, I was watching some of him this weekend. He's probably better than Jamari Saleh. He's probably going to be a top 20 pick. This offensive line is dominant. You have three running backs who are very capable and, and very explosive running behind that unit. You put that up with two tight ends who can block very well and be athletic in the open field. Hit the big plays when Stetson Bennett has it downfield. This Georgia offense, yes, they want to run the football, but they can also hit those explosive plays. And this is an LSU team that hasn't been great against the run and has been leaky in the secondary as well at times. And I, I feel like if I were to be asked what I think the game flow will look like, is Georgia's going to establish that physicality in the run game early? And then once you start bringing up safeties to stop this run, that's when guys like Arian Smith and some of those, Lad McConkey even up the seam, that's when they get behind you and hit those plays. And, yes, Stetson Bennett's not winning any awards for disgusting arm talent, but he's a very accurate passer, especially when he pushes that deep ball down the field. And that's kind of the recipe for Georgia, and it's been working for two years now. Yeah, and I mean, I think you almost wonder, is LSU deep enough to handle a Georgia offense that I think you need to be able to sub guys in and out up, up front and obviously some injuries early and in, in, in just a long season for a team that's still rebuilding and filling out a roster. I think George is not the team you want to see week. What is it? 13 for the, all these teams. Cause they're going to hammer you. They, they, they run three deep. And then again, what you say, their offensive line, really good tight ends are all hammers and they block hard. So yeah, it just feels like, I mean, you might be having an LSU team that could be wearing down obviously and have a great game last game. 
in a young team that I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like they're coming into this matchup in a great spot. Yeah, it, it's a young team full of transfers, and, and you are kind of right. It doesn't They didn't look great against Arkansas two weeks ago either. They looked horrible against Texas A&M, and there could be an element of just like, yeah, these kids aren't used to playing like a full SEC schedule versus on the other side, Georgia. Not only are, are they a little bit more experienced, although they are kind of young, they have like three deep of guys that they can play. They've been blowing a lot of teams out in the second half. So like these guys are a, a little bit more fresh. Now flipping the side, LSU's offense at times, Jaden Daniels has looked awesome, but then at times he's looked completely lost. You look back at that first half against Florida state, most of the game, in fact, against Florida state completely lost, not getting off his first read. And then when, when he's in that first read, he's not there. He's just taken off. And this LSU offensive line has struggled to protect at times as well. You're seeing probably one of the best pass rush units in the country in Georgia. I have a very hard time telling myself that you'll see a a, a Jaden Daniels that is confident in playing his best football against the Georgia defense that this smothering and good. Yeah. And just, I'm still not totally convinced on this LSU team in general. I think they've had some nice wins. Obviously the Bama game really a, a huge win, but, I mean, they get blown off the field by a a Tennessee team where you didn't even look like they belonged, I I don't know, against a Georgia team that made them not look like they really belong. So I'm not into comparing like for likes. I I know I've mentioned that in the past, but I just – I don't feel like this is a good spot for LSU. Just just where they are, I don't think they have a chance for the playoffs anymore. That A&M loss is super deflating in my mind, and – I think they might be ready to like kind of move on to the future at this point. Yeah, and and the future is bright for LSU. We might oh. as well say that. Like this, Brian Kelly's got this team going in the right direction. Well, I think Perkins looks like he's going to be a great, great player. He's going to be a top ten pick. I think. I think he's that good. But I mean, capping this game, Georgia coming in at sixteen and a half point favorites. I just struggle to see LSU get either parts of their game going, and it's been an offense at times that yeah they've there's been some games where, where daniels has been able to push the ball down the field and, and throw successfully he's completed 68 percent of his balls there's also been a lot of times where he just hasn't had time to throw the football and they want to establish the run i mean you, you can't really run against this georgia team especially with the jalen carter who's looking as healthy as he's been all year that dude is a top three pick when he's healthy i don't see them running the football i don't see them being able to drop back and pass i think the, the big question mark here, and the, really the only way that I see LSU having any sort of consistent success against this Georgia defense is Jaden Daniels kind of playing some hero ball, extending the plays. I just, this Georgia, these linebackers are too athletic. These defensive linemen are too fast. I just don't see Daniels being able to play the hero ball that he's played in the past against a Georgia team that's just too fast, too physical, and too strong, and too disciplined. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I honestly kind of love this 16.5 point line for, for George. I, I do think they're going to house them. And again, this isn't like an anti LSU thing. I just think this isn't the spot that LSU wants to be in. I, uh, coming off that loss again, I think doesn't help them in this point. I think the, uh, yeah, just having worn down on this season, that, that honestly has been really good. I think they've been way better than almost anyone thought. Oh, yeah. me. But I, again, I'm just, I, I, th- I don't think Georgia, maybe they're not quite as good as last year on defense, but still really good, and, and that offense seems like it's really kind of humming along. And, and one one argument against the uh, taking Georgia cover all those points is, okay, it could be just kind of a look ahead where they'll take care of business, kind of let the like coast, kind of what they did with Florida. Like you get up big and then you coast a little bit, and you might not be able to cover the 16 and a half points. I don't think you'll see that one. Remember last year, like Georgia's not the reigning SEC champions. They lost to Alabama in this game last year. Like they're going to be, they want to hang the banner. They want to go and be the kings of the SEC. And this is kind of where Georgia, I think, can really establish their dominance in the SEC with how bad Bama has been. And the, the confusing picture of what Bama might look like in five years. Georgia in five years, if Kirby Smart's still in Athens, like this is going to be a wagon for years. It's hard, and I'm not even a Georgia fan, but it's hard to convince me that there's going to be any other team emerging out of this conference and being kind of the, the champs of this conference for, for a decade other than the Georgia Bulldogs. I'm very, very comfortable laying the 16 and a half points. I think when you look at both sides of the ball, Georgia has the massive edge on both sides. I think you're going to see a team that's ready to go win an SEC title, which they did not do last year. Again, national champs. SEC title matters to the people in Athens, Georgia. That type of stuff matters. I think Georgia is going to be locked in. Give me Georgia to cover the 16 and a half before it gets to 17. I also think they're going to want to play good football because, frankly, in the last two weeks, I know the scores maybe don't say it, but 
not a great start to the game against Georgia Tech. Really didn't look great against Kentucky. So I, I you got to think they're going to want to kind of start clicking heading into the postseason and probably put a pretty good beating on LSU. Yeah, this is where you want. This is where the Georgia Bulldogs want to peak. This is where they're going to peak, and I have a lot of confidence that that Coach Kirby Smart is going to get these guys playing their best football as they get into December and January. Can book that Georgia 16 and a half points again. We appreciate you guys checking us out. If you do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate y'all, and we'll talk to you guys later.